Hello, I'm Shanna Mouton Gray, Managing Director with McKinney and Associates, and welcome to our very first Tips in 20 webinar. Our goal here is to help professionals and novices and anyone in general who'd like to do better and be better in all things related to public relations, communications, and presentations. We understand here at McKinney, it doesn't take a lot of time to help people do better and be better. Hence, we're gonna help you in 20 minutes or less. So let's get started. I wanna quickly give a shout out to my producer, Ron. He's the man behind the scenes, making it happen for me today and keeping me on task. Thanks a lot, Ron. You're welcome, Shannon. Great. With today's webinar, we'll provide you five easy to use tips you can implement during your next presentation. If you take nothing else away from today, remember, KISS, keep it short and simple. It's our guiding principle for presentations here at McKinney. I cannot stress this enough. First and foremost is practice, 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 and then practice some more. Let me give you an example. On the subway ride in today, I was going over these notes. You can't practice enough. You wanna get comfortable with the presentation, with the slides, and with the information you're gonna be sharing. You wanna make it your own. You wanna put it in your voice, use your vernacular. Uh, a great idea is to practice in front of family and friends. And if you have children, especially young children, between the ages of about five and 10, you definitely want to practice in front of them. They will be your most honest and your most brutal critics. A great and simple practice technique is to record yourself and then watch yourself. Are you talking too fast or too slow? Are you now as my arms are flailing all over the place? It works good in this webinar, but would be horrible if I was actually on camera and you could see me right now. Are you speaking clearly or are there words in your presentation that trip you up? Practicing will also help you figure out the presentation logistics. I happen to be very fortunate to have Ron here helping me out on the back end. Some of us, in fact, most of us won't have that person behind us. So who's going to be in charge of your slides? Are you going to be advancing them? Will you be using a, a keyboard or a clicker? Is someone else gonna advance the slides? If they are, what's the cue for the next slide? As the presenter, you don't wanna be so preoccupied with the slides that your delivery takes a back seat. And before I go any further, we seem to see, this is why you practice. And we did practice a lot and we're good, okay. See, this is why you practice and practice and practice some more. And before I go any further, I have to pay homage to his royal purposeless. Let's give a moment, please. Thank you. Now, let's party like it's 1999. Remember back in the day, actually pre-1999, before technology, you know, back in the dark ages, we used to use clear transparencies and overhead projectors to do presentations. You don't want technology to be your downfall. We've all experienced presentations when the technology failed, when the technology failed, when the technology just was not cooperating. With overhead projectors, the biggest problem used to be changing the light bulb. Yes, I've just dated myself and we're not going to discuss it during the Q&A section. If you don't know what an overhead projector is, please check with a Gen Xer or a baby boomer. Anyway, as I was saying, technology can fail. It's not always going to work. So you wanna make sure and have a hard copy on hand for yourself. The show must go on. It's better to have a hard copy and not need it than to need it and not have it. And those words of wisdom are brought to you by my grandmother. You are the presenter. You set the mood and the tone for the presentation. You want to be compelling as the information you share. 
The information may be boring, but that doesn't mean you have to be. Let me just stop for a second and share a story. Several years ago, um, about 2003, 2004 timeframe, I was fortunate enough to participate and attend a presentation given by a gentleman who was the lead structural engineer um, for the Pentagon after 9-11. And while a lot of the information he shared and a lot of the slides that he presented talked about load bearing walls and tonnage and compression and just engineering things that I had little interest in and little knowledge of and could barely follow those portions of the presentation. What I do remember was when he talked about the patriotism that he and everyone felt what I do remember is him saying they had to make men and women go home because they wanted to work past the limits of their body. I remember him talking about the volunteers who brought breakfast, lunch, and dinner around the clock so men and women could finish the Pentagon on time. Again, the information may, may not be particularly interesting to all of your audience. Um, but the presentation needs to be. You need to make it compelling in your delivery. We want more slides. We want more slides. We want more slides. We want more slides. Has no one ever said at any presentation ever in life and ever will in life? Have you ever asked for more slides? I doubt it. We suggest that you be succinct and thoughtful. A lot of people don't have time to sit for hours on end anymore. Um, we're now learning that with social media, um, most of us have the attention span of fruit flies. So if you get someone's attention in a presentation, you need to hold it. Um, use photos. There's a picture. There's a reason why we say a picture is worth a thousand words. Use images to drive your points home and to back up your talking points. And let me just say this real quick. Speaking of talking points, please do not read your slides. Do not read your slides. And for the cheap seats, please do not read your slides. Remember, folks, reading is fundamental. Your audience can read the slides. You're there to add to the slides and give life to the PowerPoint. Ooh, we're on to WIFM. That's one of my favorite acronym, acronyms. It sounds fun to say it. So everyone say it with me on three, okay? One, two, three, WIFM. I'm gonna ask y'all later how many of you actually say it and you can tell me. Anyway, the WIFM. Your presentation is an event, which means your audience is an integral part of your success. You want to give them what they want and what they need. You want to make their time worth sharing with you. When preparing your slide deck, think about these questions. Truly, why are you doing the presentation? What are you trying to teach? What is the information you really want your audience to walk away with? Why should they spend any of their time listening to you prattle on about this, that, and the other thing? And lastly, how have you made their lives better or easier? How have you helped them professionally or personally? Are you going to be able to help them with some small tidbit out of 50 slides? Finally, you want to be effective. You want to spur your audience to action. You want to influence them in some sort of way. And let's face it, we also want to be remembered when the lights go on. Um, and that's a win nowadays, actually. In any case, the best way to do this is with a story, a personal story, to bring the audience into your world, like the one I shared about the, the post-9-11 presentation. People will long time forget what you said. What they will remember is how you made them feel. 
It's now time for the Q&A portion of the program. So please place your tray tables in an upright position and hand your trash to the attendants as they make a final pass through the cabin. Don't forget to type your questions in the Q&A box. And let's see who's got a question for us. Thanks, Ron. How do you keep your presentation on track when the technology fails? Well, I can speak firsthand from that. First and foremost, don't get flustered. Hang in there. It happens to everybody. You're not the first person that technology has failed on. Regretfully, you won't be the last person technology fails on. Just ask your audience to hang in there with you, and they will. Remember, your audience wants you to succeed. They want you to do well. They want to hear what you have to say. So hang in there. Let whoever's working the technology get it together, give you a heads up, and then start again and keep going. Next question. What is a good number of slides for a presentation? Wow, that's tough. It really depends on what you're presenting and how long, in theory, you're supposed to be presenting for. Let me say for this presentation, we had, what, Ron, 12, 13 slides? Yeah, um, a general rule is about two slides per minute, more or less. Um, let me say though, that can get awfully, awfully long if you're presenting for 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, remember, KISS, keep it short and simple. Um, think about getting your information in and you getting out quickly. Next question. How to keep from using your slides as script. This is where practice comes in. Um, you really want to internalize it and use the slides really as a guide. And let me just say, I have my own script here. That way, I didn't have to rely on the slides. And a lot of times, if we see the words, we'll repeat the words. If you have your own script, then you don't have to rely on the slides. And again, it's one of those things, if technology fails and the PowerPoint goes down, you can continue teaching and sharing, and for knowledge, and sharing information and knowledge with or without the presentation going on. Do we have any other questions? Okay, as someone who believes in not taking up time just to take up time, again, I wanna thank you for joining us for this inaugural very first, yay, Tips in 20. I must admit, I was really excited about this. This is something new we're doing here at McKinney and Associates as a way to give back to the PR and communications community. Um, we certainly hope you'll be able to join us next month for our topic on Cubicle Etiquette 101, or how not to be a douche when sharing an office. For more information about McKinney and Associates, please go to our website, mckpr.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and SlideShare. I'm Shannon Mouton from McKinney and Associates. Thank you and have a great afternoon.